Hey guys, um, today I'm going to do my vampire collection that I have. Um, somebody asked me to do it, so I decided I'll do it uh, to make them happy. But uh, first and foremost, I want to mention that I do have from Dust Till Dawn double disc, but I keep it in my Quentin Tarantino section. I'll go over that later. And I also have some other ones in like box sets and stuff, like Vamp, which is a fun, campy 80s vampire movie. First, I'll start off with the four film favorite Draculas. I have not watched any of these. They're all Hammer movies. There's the horror of Dracula. Dracula has risen from the grave. Taste of blood of Dracula. And Dracula AD 1972. I don't know much about them. I know that they all, pretty much all have Christopher Lee in it. The classic Dracula. They all have Christopher Lee in it. And, uh... Dracula AD 1972 looked really weird and psychedelic almost. I kind of want to hammer I think's last movies. I believe they're all hammer movies. I'll have to get around to just watch those one day. I remember my grandpa used to bring down recorded tapes and I'd always see those hammer movies. So I, I might have seen them a long time ago, but it's so long ago I couldn't even remember it. Then we have uh, 30 Days of Night here. Uh, I must say that 30 Days of Night is a pretty good movie, but I must say it plays more like a trapped in a Night Living Dead like environment and I'm gonna say I was a little disappointed it was really hyped up for me and I just thought it was alright I thought it was a pretty decent movie I wouldn't recommend it but I would if somebody said it absolutely sucked I'd completely disagree with them it's good but it's not something I'd recommend highly and we have Bardell of Blood uh, the second tale from the crit film except besides the old ones but Bardell of Blood always plays on Comedy Central and I must say I have no clue why it's really kind of a crappy movie uh, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but I remember thinking at least the uh, little person from um, Ghoulies 2 was in it. I don't know. Dennis Miller's comedy is a little weird. I don't really care for the movie that much. It's really crappy, but I do remember liking a couple scenes when I was a little kid. Then we have Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Of course, I got it for $5. I couldn't pass it up. I used to watch it a lot when I was a little kid, but I haven't seen it so much in a very, very long time. Gotta like Donald Sutherland. Gotta like Richard Hager. Gotta like Luke Perry, even. I like Luke Perry because he was a character in Oz and stuff. I'm obsessed with Oz, if you haven't noticed. But, uh, you know, I remember liking this. I just need to see it again. It's been so long. And we have here uh, Dark Craving, put out by Media Blasters. It's, uh, I think it used to be called AKA um, Heart Stopper. It's a John Russo movie. I've not got a chance to watch it. It says Michael J. Pollard's in it. I knew Tom Savini's in it, too. So, you know, I'll have to watch it one of these days. It's not too old. It's made in a uh, fairly... 1989, late 80s. I'll have to check this out let everybody know how it is. I haven't seen it. But if anyone has seen it, let me know. Now, here we have The Daughters of Darkness. Blue Underground Edition. It also comes with the movie The Blood Splattered Bride. I have the VHS of The Blood Splattered Bride. I haven't watched it. I haven't watched Daughters of Darkness either. This is supposed to be like the ultimate lesbianism vampire film. I hear it's really good. It looks artistic and crazy and everything, and I think I'll really like it. I just need to get a chance to watch it. Sorry, guys, I haven't seen all these. It's just, uh, I like to buy, and then I never have time to watch after I'm, because I'm too busy searching to what to buy. Then we have Fright Night, which is a classic from my childhood. Love Fright Night. Uh, I love how they kept the VHS cover pretty similar to the DVD cover here, the DVD. That's just an awesome cover. It's just an awesome movie. I'd recommend Fright Night. Ah, uh, you're cold, Brewster. It's weird. Didn't that guy end up being in, like, homosexual pornos or something like that? Uh, what is this? Evil Eddie? He's also in, like, At Close Range and 967 Evil and stuff like that. It's just strange to see him. It's weird. And then we have Friday Night 2, the out-of-print DVD by Arsenin. And i got to say that the DVD transfer is not that great, but this is one of my favorite guilty pleasure movies of all time. I like it better than the first Friday Night because John Grise makes an appearance as Louis the Werewolf, and he's absolutely hilarious. And, uh, Brian... I want to, what is his name? Brian Thompson plays this guy that eats bugs. He's pretty awesome, too, in it. I'd recommend this one for funness. It's really campy and fun. I like it. And then we have Innocent Blood here. This is like a comedic vampire tale. The vampire goes against, like, the mob. It has a great cast, but it's kind of boring. It's, I expected more. But it's great. It absolutely is great to see Don Rickles as a vampire. That's all I have to say. We have Interview with the Vampire. You know what, I hadn't seen this since I was very young, and uh, I was too stupid to even know what the hell was going on. I knew it was like the epic vampire thing, but I was too stupid to understand the fine details that made it a great movie, from what I understand. 
I'll have to watch it one of these days. Uh, Neil Jordan, I've directed this. I believe he did uh, uh, Company of the Wolves, which is recommended to me too, and I haven't seen it. But uh, Interview with the Vampire has some pretty cool scenes that I remember. Spoiler alert, uh, when that girl on uh, Tom Cruise is probably trying to buy that girl's affection, he's buying her stuffed animals, and she's ended up killing people and putting them under it. That was always a pretty cool scene. Then we have probably my favorite vampire movie here, The Lost Boys Double Disc. Not seen the sequel. You know what, uh, the guy from uh, DeadPit.com, the creepy Kentuckian, he said it wasn't too bad, and I'd agree with him, like, I haven't seen it, but I agree with what he took at it. He, he wasn't expecting the greatest thing ever, and why would you expect the greatest thing ever? It's a direct-to-DVD sequel. I mean, you know, what do you expect? And he, I think he was happy with what he got, and I think that I might be too, if that's what it, I don't expect too much from it, so when I get a chance to